Now that we've introduced the axioms, I'm going to try to convince you that we can represent just about anything we want to as a set. So first we're going to talk about ordered pairs. Recall that the set containing A and B is equal to the set containing B and A. And so when we want to represent ordered pairs, we're going to have to come up with a way to say which element comes first. And so to do this, we're going to represent the ordered pair A and B, which we use parentheses to denote, as the set containing the singleton A and the doubleton A and B. And so this is still equal to, for example, the set containing B and A and the singleton A. But we can, in both cases, extract which is supposed to be the first element and which is supposed to be the second element by looking at um, the set and seeing which element is the one that only has one element, and that's the singleton A in both cases, and then looking at that element inside, and so that's going to be A, so we see that A is the first element, and then the second element is the other element that's in the two element set. And so using ordered pairs, we can now represent functions. So consider the function defined by f of a is equal to b, and f of b is equal to c. The way that we can represent this function as a set is to represent it as a set of ordered pairs. So we represent it as a set of ordered pairs a, b, and b, c. And so now if we want to find the image of A through F, um, we find the ordered pair that contains A as its first element, and so that's this ordered pair. And then we look at the second element of that ordered pair, and that's B, and so that lets us know that F of A is equal to B. And so um, now that we're talking about functions, um, let's, let's go into a bit more detail about some types of functions that exist. So this function is a function from the set a, b to the set b, c. But it's also a function from the set a, b to the set b, c, and d. Even though there's no element that maps onto b, it's still every element of this set maps with f to some element of this set, so we can also say this. But what if we only want to talk about the cases where every element in the set that we're mapping onto is mapped onto by some element of the set? Well, we have a word for these types of functions, and we call them surjections. We also describe them as being onto. And so now another type of function is one where each element maps to a unique element. So um, this one, uh, it's the case that A is going to map to B, B is going to map to C. There's no element that maps to the same element. So one uh, example of a function that doesn't do this would be the function uh, defined by f of A equals B and f of b equals b. Now we see that both a and b map to the same element. And so if we have a function that doesn't have any of this, and so each element maps to a unique element, we have what we call an injection. And we describe these functions as being 1, 2, 1. And so finally, um, the last type of function to talk about is a function that has both of these properties. So a function that is both an injection and a surjection. And we call these functions bijections. And um, in this case, we just combine both of these definitions and we call them one to one and onto. And so one example of a pretty obvious bijection is the function from the natural numbers 
to the natural numbers defined by f of x is equal to x. And so here, um, each element is going to map to a different element. So you have x equals 1, you're going to get 1, but then there's no um, number that's going to also give you 1 other than 1. And we also see that it's a surjection, or that it's onto, because for any natural number, you can find a preimage that's going to map onto it. And in this case, it's the same number. And so next time, we're going to look a bit more at these injections and surjections and bijections, see a bit more what they mean, and see some other ones.